months ago, I was at a meeting for technology directors. We were taking turns, going around, sharing new ideas and initiatives planned to take place in our districts, when a colleague suggested an idea I wanted to know more about. I wanted to know more about the motivation, the reasoning. I wanted to know more about the why. And the reply was, well, it's the easiest way to manage from the back end. The easiest way? The back end? When did it become about what's easy and not about what's best? Why are we not focused on the students who are currently sitting in front of us? When I was in high school, we had computer labs. And in the classrooms, we had a few desktops, a projector, and a phone. And with that type of technology, sure, it made sense that my home district had a director of IT who was responsible for running our district's technology both within the classroom and from behind the walls. I was seated in rows for most of my classes, and I took exams for assessments. My high school experience was reminiscent of the factory model of education to which Seth Godin refers in his manifesto, Stop Stealing Dreams. And my high school community was focused on what and who were behind us, in both a figurative and in a literal sense. But now, we're in a world of iPads, Chromebooks, BYOD learning environments, AR, VR, robots, drones, a world where technology is mobile and ever-changing, and it's being given more and more responsibility for what happens in the classroom, in front of our students. So we have to ask the question, should the back end still be the driving force of the decisions we're making for the students who are currently in front of us? I want to explain how I came to ask this question. About six years ago, I was starting a brand new job at a brand new school in Philadelphia that I thought was focused on performing arts. And as a theater person, this was my calling. It was only after I was hired did I realize performing arts were only a small part of the focus. The larger focus was on innovation, on the intersection of arts and sciences, and on how technology can merge the two and redefine the way we learn. I reported for work on the very first day, and I held an iPad for the very first time, and everything changed. I spent the following years learning and seeing firsthand how technology, when integrated with contemporary pedagogy, can be a real life game changer that can be part of the process of preparing our students for their futures. And I think I was able to realize this because I had six years of experience teaching English to grades ranging from six to 12 prior to this job. So I wasn't focused merely on the device, but on how the device could transform my teaching and my students' learning. And I came to realize that curriculum plus technology plus pedagogy and plus what I think is at the heart of all good education, relationships equals innovative learning. My students wrote and published multi-touch books, designed e-courses for younger students, made movies, coded robots to analyze literature, and regularly corresponded with students from the Netherlands. And I wanted to share this love and help others see it's not about any one device or buzzword or even about the number of devices we have. Up-leveling instruction with a focus on technology integration for me became about this combination. So this drive inspired me to earn my EDD in educational leadership and search for a place where I could have an impact that would reach beyond one classroom. I landed as Director of Technology, Innovation, and STEM programs for a public district just outside of Philadelphia. This lengthy title was designed with intentionality. The previous title was Director of IT, but this new title was created to incorporate the work that's done behind the scenes with the work that's done in our classrooms in front of our students. Education is a rapidly changing field. The knowledge and skills our students need today to be successful in their futures are different from the knowledge and skills students needed to be successful in their futures 100 years ago. Seth Godin states the good jobs of the future are not going to involve working for giant companies on an assembly line. They all require individuals willing to chart their own path, whether or not they work for someone else. 
Sir Ken Robinson states creativity is as important now in education as literacy, and we should treat it with the same status. And Heidi Hayes Jacobs questions. I often wonder if many of our students feel like they're time traveling as they walk through the school door each morning. As they cross the threshold, do they feel as if they're entering a simulation of life in the 1980s and then at the end of the school day, do they feel as though they've returned to the 21st century? Perhaps they do. And these three quotations are only a small sample of the messages that are coming to us from the authors of articles, books, TED Talks, documentaries, in which these speakers are calling us to action as an educational community to create contemporary learning experiences that will in fact prepare our students for their futures. They're calling us to action to create change. And I think an important part of that change is shifting the focus from what was behind us to what is in front of us. Our students, their learning experiences and their futures should be the driving force of every decision we make. Now, I wanna be sure I'm clear. We still need the wires. We still need the back end. We need them more than ever. But we need the people that are making the decisions about the back end and the people that are making the decisions about the front end to be in sync. So what questions can we ask to merge these two areas and shift our focus forward? As educators, we start with the why and we plan backwards. So what if we thought about the knowledge and skills our students need to be successful in their futures, and then we thought about how we can use all of the tools we have available to us, whether we get them from a device, a hardware, a software, a book, an experience, or a conversation, and have them work together to best prepare our students? What if directors of technology had classroom experience, so authentic experience was driving everyday decisions? And what if both the back end part of the wires and the front end part of the hardware and software and other tools used every day by our students fell under their purview with additional staff to focus on the individual parts? And what if the directors of curriculum and instruction had training in or experiences with the best practices and in technology integration? So moving forward, curriculum, technology, and pedagogy could merge with the strong relationships growing every day in our classes to truly create a culture of innovation where the back end and the front end are not separated by walls, wires, or practices of the past, but are connected and seamlessly integrated. So the focus shifts to what and who are in front of us. What if the front end, our students and their futures drove every decision we made. Thank you.